More than just precious stones, I bring you an ancient power. The Terra update is coming and it is a complete rework. Let's break down his kit so you can be ready when he goes live. First off we have his passive which activates when you cast a spell. Your next two otters attack in quick succession dealing additional damage that scales with both your level and bonus armor and they reduce the cooldown of your non-ultimate spells with each hit. Now this reduced cooldown is kind of weird because the more CDR you have the less it reduces the cooldown. At 0% CDR it will take a full second off with each hit but at 40% CDR it is only 0.6 seconds off. This felt kind of weird at first, but at least we are avoiding things like but this. That's very punishable. Blow your five, look at this. Oh, Seraph. Oh, Which is probably a good turn, turn away! W turn away! Can I open my then we have his Q, which is a small AoE heal. The heal gains charges from one up to three. Using the heal expends all the charges healing for an increased amount for each. It has the same cooldown and mana cost regardless of charges used, so Saving up charges is more efficient, but casting it on each charge gives you more passive procs at the cost of dumping your mana. This spell gains more cooldown reduction from the passive than the other basic spells with a 5 second reduction at 0% CDR and 3 second reduction at 40% CDR. The heal scales with both AP and your bonus health, so even if you are just getting tankier, the heal will still increase. Something to note is that this spell actually has a short casting time. This is important if you are chasing as it slightly interrupts your movement and because it isn't the only spell of his with a similar effect, so it can add up really quickly and lead to a target getting away if you're not careful. Now we have the W, which can link Tarek to another champion. On cast it gives both a shield based on the target's max HP, as well as passively increasing the armor on both of you by a percentage of Tarek's. If nobody is around and you're in a pinch, you can cast in yourself for the shield and passive proc. While linked, all of your abilities will also cast from the Lynx Champion location, but the spell effects don't double dip if they overlap, so it just gives you an effective way to expand the area your spells are covering and assist someone from a distance. This is really great because it means you can wail away at probably their front line to dump your passive procs and keep the spell cooldowns low. Going too far from the target will break the tether, but it's a good bit farther than the casting range and moving back in the range will bring it right back. This will last until you recast it on someone else. Again, this spell has a short cast animation that'll interrupt your movement and attacks. The E remains his CC option. He fires out a beam and after one second it does damage and stuns. If you have Bastion on another target, both beams will go towards your cursor, so be especially careful in how you are aiming to get the best results. The damage scales with both AP and bonus armor, so again, even if you're building tanky, this spell will increase in effectiveness. While this spell does have a delay for activation, it doesn't impair your movement or casting at all on activation, so you don't have to worry about that when chasing down targets. And then of course there is the ultimate, and boy is this one going to swing some fights and tilt some people off the planet. Terra creates an AoE that follows him and his link targets for 2.5 seconds, and it doesn't do anything during this time, but after that it collapses and every ally in the AoE gains invulnerability for 2.5 seconds. They can still be CC'd, but for that time they'll take no damage. This spell also has that whole interrupting thing on cast going on, so keep that in mind. Now that is his kit overall, here are some points to keep in mind. There are a lot of those movement and attack interrupts, which if you're like me and want to build them as a carry lord top lane or a jungler will be potentially annoying, but it's really not too bad once you get used to it. Something like Iceborne Gauntlet means you'll just weave in the cast when Gauntlet is on cooldown anyway, and the slow will let you stick to your target, which is great. He has some really good scaling on health and armor stats, so getting really bulky is enough to pump out some respectable damage as long as you use your passive well. Don't underestimate the range of a WE combo. You get the full range of the W to attach it to your ally, and then the full range of the E extending from there, so you can add the CC from a pretty incredible distance. If you've already put the W on that target, the range is even longer because the tether will reform before you are in W range. Also, don't feel like you always have to W your team's ADC, which I think is going to be a lot of people's instincts. The shield size of the W will scale with their HP, making it pretty huge on tanks, and the added armor is going to make them even more annoying, so try to find the best use of the tether in each situation. Finally, there's not a lot of reason to wait for your team to be low to ult. Instead, look for times when the enemy team is very dedicated to an engage. 
Something like dragon or baron fights, or right after they've committed cooldowns and summoners to going deep, are perfect times to use the ultimate just to prevent 2.5 seconds of damage. The long delay in the ultimate makes it much riskier to try and save near-death allies. Make sure you maximize the allies hit by positioning well with your tethered target. That's the Taric rework. I have to say it's really satisfying to play, it's going to be super annoying so all you poppy players out there, get ready to expand your champion pool. That's all for now, I'll see you guys next time.